Live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to theCUBE at Nutanix.next 2018 in London. With you, Piscar, I'm Stu Miniman. Happy to welcome back to the program multi-time guest, Satyam Vagani, who's the Vice President and GM of IoT and AI at Nutanix. Satyam, great to see you. And uh, likewise, Stu. All right. Thanks for having me back. So, IoT and AI, uh, two of the fastest moving uh, spaces in IT today. Uh, remember, uh, you know, we ha had you on the program a little over a year ago to talk about, you know, Project Sherlock. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that was where, uh, you know, Nutanix was starting with IoT, and I remember asking you, I'm like, you know, Nutanix and IoT, Why? come on, I don't understand. You know, Nutanix for the most part, you know, it's like two products at that mm -hmm. point, and, and where they're going. Uh, fast forward today, it, it's now called Xi IoT. Yeah. Uh, that's XI and then IoT, because, you know, Nutanix uh, makes the product simple, but not necessarily the name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but uh, you know, uh, Sachem, help uh, help bring us up to speed as to uh, you know what your team's been working on and uh, what was the state of the product today. All right. So, like you said, we we started way back around a year and a half ago uh, from now, and uh, we were working on Project Sherlock. And the idea was uh, the fact that a lot of analysts were projecting that a lot of enterprise data is going to be produced at the edge, and it was equally important to process it, process it at the edge for many different reasons, autonomy, security, cost, compliance. And so that was the genesis, and we thought we were very well suited to do it because this was yet another pro problem where you needed to provide a very elegant system, a very well-contained system, just like what HCI is for your primary data center, in an extremely uh, remote and extremely hostile environment. And so that was why we thought we should track, take a crack at, crack at it. And along the way, of course, then our ambitions brought into being a multi-cloud company. And that fit in very well as well, because IoT is never a edge-only problem or a cloud-only problem. Every IoT app kind of spans the edge in the cloud. And this was a perfect way to showcase the multi-cloud data plane, multi-cloud control plane oh, capability. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. It was one of my, my rants this year is, uh, you know, oh, you know, edge kills the cloud, I'm like, no, <laughs> it doesn't kill the cloud. Yeah. Edge actually will help increase a lot of the stuff in the cloud. It just means that it all won't be in this mystical the cloud in the central, which yeah. we know everything is being built really as a distributed architecture right. today. So yeah. there's a lot of nuance and understanding, uh, you know, sure. how, how some of those yeah. pieces together. Uh, what I was excited to hear is you actually have, if I remember right, you have a customer talking publicly about using this today. Uh, that's so uh, th there's nothing better than hearing, you know, yeah. a real world example. So yeah. you know, maybe help walk us through that briefly. And that's the most fulfilling part about it. So, you know, that's the plan for tomorrow's keynote. And, you know, it's very fulfilling because when we started IoT, you know, one of the other concerns other than the why Nutanix was, well, why IoT? It's, you know, not a mature space. Nobody quite knows what to do about it. And that was the point is that we thought we had an opinion about the edge being a kind of key piece of IoT, the edge plus cloud convergence being a key piece of IoT, the centralized management being a key piece of IoT. And then we were able to validate it, not just with you know, POCs, but you know, with people who have put us in production in very fantastic and remarkable use cases. So, so yeah, you know, that, that was the journey. Uh, this one use case was around smart retail, but it kind of embedded all the elements that we kind of hold dear to our heart is, you know, can we instantiate AI inferencing, complex AI inferencing logic at the edge? Can we instantiate containerized applications at the edge? Can we do interesting data management between the edge and the cloud? So looking at this from uh, a technical perspective, what does this look like? So if I look at this from, you know, from that technical mm -hmm. perspective, I, see, I still see a data center, I still see the cloud, I st still see data going back and forth. Yeah. What makes Xi IoT different? Different. Uh, so one is the focus on edge computing. So you know, a lot of IoT solutions were either made at a time when there was a kind of vertically integrated IoT application, and that vendor said, okay, now let me get broader. So that's one category of you know, IoT solutions out in the market. There were some IoT kind of uh, offers which were cloud first, right? So you know, there's an IoT offering in the cloud potentially for doing consumer IoT projects, and now that offering wants to expand into enterprise. We said, let's go from the edge outwards, because you know, in the enterprise context, like I said, 
data processing, the amount of data, the volume is pretty overwhelming. So that's one difference, which is the richness of services that we provide at the edge. The stack is pretty deep, but at the same time, pretty miniaturized uh, to Dheeraj's point from the keynote in the morning, is these environments need to run in pretty compact form factors in terms of computing. So that's one difference. The other difference is uh, the, the pipeline all the way to the cloud. We don't consider this as an edge-only problem. And to that end, we not only do a pipeline to the cloud, but we allow the customers to have a choice of cloud. So we don't dictate a choice of cloud just because we are providing a solution to the edge. And another key difference is the ease of use, both for deployment and operations, of the edge device itself. So you know, think about deploying this thing or a thousand stores. We made it a zero touch provisioning process. So the only requirement to deploy the Xi Edge is that you plug in the internet cable. And that is very core to the Nutanix philosophy, right? Simplicity, one click simplicity. Yeah. And the last thing is APIs, is the programmer APIs that the whole system exposes is Apache class APIs, open source class APIs, so that people who are already used to various programming frameworks can, can immediately jump on this. Yeah, I, I mean, you bring up uh, one, one of the, what we saw is, uh, in our research, one of the biggest hurdles for this. Uh, huh. you go back to when we first looked at huh. industrial internet, we actually did some research mm. with GE, and mm. it's the OT uh -huh. really doesn't play with IT. Yeah. You've got you know, very specific gear, yeah. and it plays certain ways, and yeah. it doesn't talk, and it doesn't yeah. have APIs, and it doesn't have networking, yeah. um, and it's all going to have sensors and mm. connectivity and things like that, yeah. and just, you know, these worlds just don't talk today. They don't, yeah. So, uh, is it, it sounds like, uh, you know, I, this is a more IT, uh, you know, friendly solution. You know, how, how do you help bridge that gap? Uh, that's a great observation. So, first of all, I would say, indeed, uh, we are coming IT inwards, right? IT outwards into OT. But at the same time, you know, the only way to make OT appreciate such a solution is to show them a path that, look, you can adopt Xi IoT, without causing disruption to your mission critical setup, OT setup that you already have. So we've put in a lot of thoughts around how we can source data from OT systems without having a conversation about throwing out, ripping and replacing every OT data gathering point and device that they have. So that was one thing. The other part is if we can provide them some extra added benefit, if that OT person was to do some of their infrastructure on top of this kind of IT, OT convert system. And so to that end, uh, we think there are some specific security benefits, some resource management benefits, some user management benefits that we can provide in this new age that the OT guys would appreciate as well. And so it was about having something for the OT guys to appreciate so that you know there is some buy-in as opposed to dictating uh, that you got to do it. So one of the, the things I observe in that industrial world is you know, there's, there's quite a lot of developers in that space as well. They're actively developing while gathering data, while you know, figuring out IoT. So how do you uh, let them, you know, let those developers work on that platform as well? For instance, do you use Carbon on that platform? Stuff like that. Right, so you know, we, we have a bunch of services on the platform. Essentially it's like a pass, but for the edge. So there's container services functions, there's some data services, AI services. But the developer point is very interesting. So in fact, as we speak, we are going through that journey as a company, right? How can we be a more developer-centric company? You know, it involves literally running a seven-hour Xi IoT lab yesterday, and a lot of people showed up, and they stayed throughout the day. So I think it's, it's a awareness thing. It's, it looks like, at least from a, interest point of view, once people see the platform, the APIs, there is true interest. And so now it is up to Nutanix to have enough events, have enough kind of awareness campaigns to make sure that you know this, this word spreads out. Unfortunately, I don't have a silver bullet for this, but you know it's literally going to be a work in progress. I think next time, next year, same time, maybe when we talk, probably we should talk about whether we made progress on this or not. Yeah, uh, speaking of areas that don't have silver bullets, uh, you mentioned security. <laughs> uh, you, you know, a lot of concern around, there's already yeah. been you know, breaches and hacks yeah. and things like that. Yeah. You know, security as we know, it just, the, the surface area goes up an order of magnitude or yeah. more. Uh, yeah. you know, how does New Hantanix look at the security aspect? Right, so uh, 
there's various things, but I'll give you one example, concrete example of what we did that is making a dramatic change, right? Moving the needle, so to speak, is, you know, if you, you can always argue that your platform is secure, but at the end of it, how do you prove it? And so one proof point we have is from a security point of view, the Xi IoT Edge is locked down. You know, even an administrator cannot log in. And so the idea was that if you ever let an administrator have a username and password to an Edge device, that is bound to be a point of compromise, no matter how secure you are. And so the only way to eliminate that is to just eliminate the need to have a username and password to an Edge device. And so those are some of the things that we kind of thought and that's actually tightly ingrained in how the system is designed. Is you can't touch the edge. You can deploy all the applications you want, but you can't touch it. You can't touch the, you know, we provide containers as a service to the edge, but you don't configure container isolation on the edge. The system does it for you. So these are some of the things where, you know, the more automation we do, the more we remove humans from some of these very mission critical, security critical uh, points. The better off we are in terms of you know reduced chances of uh, hacks. Okay, so you've got a customer up on stage tomorrow. Is is Zai IoT? Is that now GA today? Oh is right, it, is sorry, uh, I yeah. forgot to mention. It is indeed it's GA. Okay. And the press release went out today. Okay, what, what, you know, give us what what should we be looking going forward? We understand we're still as an industry early on this journey. Uh, your team's been working on it for a while, but mm -hmm. what should we be looking for? What are some of the the key things uh, down the road that that, that you're excited for? Uh, from Nutanix or yeah, from, industry? Well, I, I, I'll, I'll take both. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me two hours. But anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. First from Nutanix. So, uh, you know, we want to, IoT is not a single vendor problem, right? So, as much as we want, we want to make this a platform that is, you know, attractive to OT folks, that is attractive to IoT vendors who have been creating these very vertical specific IoT apps. We want to prove to them that this is a way better platform for them to deploy their apps at industry scale. We want to be, you want to, we want to appeal to uh, AI guys, you know, data scientists who are going to create interesting applications around data processing. So, you know, some of the next few steps is to provide interesting features and functions in the system which appeal to all these demographics. Uh, from a GTM point of view, go to market point of view, we want to make sure that we get some partnerships right. Because uh, again, this is not a just a technology problem. Uh, so th those are some of the steps you are going to see. Uh, you are probably going to see more. You know, we are open to you know the bring your own cloud philosophy uh, for for our IoT platform. Out of the box, we support Azure, uh, AWS, Google, and uh, private cloud. If you uh, bring that in. And maybe we'll expand that portfolio because there are other cl cloud providers, especially if you are looking at regional markets like APAC and AMIA and so on. So that's some of the thing. And then last but not the least, you are going to see more and more investment uh, in AI. Because you know there's obviously a lot of talk about AI, but and it's very easy to do a proof of concept, or well, kind of easy. But it's very difficult to deploy that proof of concept at an industrial scale, and that is a problem we want to really, really solve very, very well. So you'll see a whole bunch of investments, features, announcements around it. All right, so we think we're going to have to leave it there, Satya. Right. Pleasure as always to catch up with you. Congrats on the progress, and look forward to hearing from your customers. Thanks on very stage. much, Stu. Thanks, Joe. Right. So. Thanks so much. For you, Piscar, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with more coverage here from Nutanix.next 2018 in London, England. You're watching theCUBE. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman. I've been an analyst with Wikibon and a co-host of theCUBE since 2010. Uh, before that, I've worked in the tech industry for many years at a number of different companies. My background really is in networking, virtualization, cloud computing uh, since the early days. I really love the intersections of some of the technology.